All right. Happy Friday. <laughs> it's almost happy Friday for me. I got to get done with work first. So, um, yeah, today is one of those days. So we're just going to ignore it and talk some hockey because that's where it's at. Okay. Uh, first, on the docket, we're doing some very brief game previews. Now, uh, the games this weekend, of course, this is the final weekend of the regular season in the FPHL. Um, in the in the Empire Division, everything is settled, so there's really nothing to play for except for keeping your momentum going, going into the playoffs. Uh, obviously, you, you don't want to end up heading into the playoffs on a losing streak. Uh, or, or playing really poorly. So um, so in that sense, the games are important. But uh, it has absolutely no bearing on uh, playoff positioning, seedings, home ice advantage, anything like that. So uh, we'll start with Empire Division. Uh, Watertown traveling to Delaware. Two games down in Harrington, 7.30 tonight, 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, the question is, are these the last two games to be played in Harrington? Uh, we hope not. Um, there's still the uh, the hope that there can be a lease extension granted, and uh, we will eagerly keep our ears low to the ground for any sound about that. Um, in regards to the series, they've played each other six times, and it's tied up 3-3. 27 goals scored for Watertown, 23 for Delaware. So these two teams have actually played uh, you know, pretty pretty well uh, against each other. Um, and, of course, Watertown, that was Delaware's first win of the year back in uh, early November. All right. Uh, Binghamton is traveling tonight to Elmira uh, for the first of a home-and-home uh, 735 tonight in Elmira, 7 o'clock tomorrow in Binghamton. Uh, Binghamton has won seven of the eight previous contests uh, by a goal differential of 51 to 21. Uh, Elmira, of course, fourth place. They're locked in. Binghamton locked in the second. All right, the other Empire Division team, pardon the reefer noise, but it's like 300 degrees today, so... Um, Got to have the refrigeration unit running. Uh, Danbury is uh, first in the Empire, of course. They are taking on a Continental Division opponent traveling to Port Huron. And uh, tonight's game will be 7.05. Saturday's game at 6.05. Danbury has won both of the previous meetings. Of course, those were in Danbury. Uh, Port Huron hoping to uh, get the... Uh, the home ice advantage with the crowd from McMore in place behind them and hoping that they can uh, uh, pull off an upset. Uh, of course, Port Huron is on the verge of being locked in the fourth place. Um, they are five points behind Motor City for the uh, in the final playoff position there. Uh, in the previous two games, Danbury has scored 11 goals, given up four. Uh, so, Danbury, I'm sorry, uh, Port Huron must sweep and have Motor City lose both games in regulation to Mississippi in order to reach third place. Chances are uh, something's not going to go that way. Uh, speaking of Motor City, they are hosting said Mississippi Seawolves. Uh, it's fifth place team versus third place team. 7.30 tonight, 6 o'clock tomorrow. And, yeah, Motor City's magic number is one point. Here's the fly in the ointment. Mississippi has swept the series so far, four games to none. Uh, yeah, uh, Mississippi is the only team that Motor City has not been able to beat this year. Uh, and... Uh, it hasn't been that close either. Uh, Mississippi has scored 25 goals. Motor City only 16 in those uh, four games. So uh, if Port Huron can pull off two uh, upset wins against Danbury, well, 
You never know. Okay, so Motor City, of course, a, a Motor City import here on Art is playing uh, for the chance to travel to or be the, uh, the, the lower seed against the, um, and the, and the next two teams that are playing each other. Another epic showdown. Car- uh, Carolina is hosting Columbus tonight at 735. And then the teams change venues, travel down to Columbus for a 7.30 start tomorrow night. Right now, Columbus is in second place, only one point behind. 113, Carolina has 114. But what that means is if Carolina pulls out a regular uh, a regulation win in either game this weekend, they get the one seed and will host the four seed. Um and then Columbus would host the third seed. Now, with the previous eight meetings between the two teams, Carolina holds a five to three edge. And uh, Carolina, again, kind of decidedly outscoring Columbus 36 to 23. So a lot of good hockey tonight. Um, again, um, I'm, I'm going to be tuned in to the, uh, the Binghamton Elmira game. Uh, but uh, I'm also going to be checking in on that Columbus uh, Columbus Carolina showdown. All right, uh, just a couple of uh, transactions from yesterday um, involving the Port Huron Prowlers. Uh, they waived uh, Braden Aban and added back Sam Williams, who played the first, uh, I believe it was 15 games of the year with Port Huron, and then he was released. Um, But uh, at any rate, Sam is back. So, yeah, 15 games played, three assists, 30 penalty minutes, and a minus four, which aren't stellar numbers, but he brings the experience. Um, And uh, that's something that Port Huron can definitely bank on uh, heading into the playoffs. Uh, the big, big news, though, is Tucker Scandalberry is back, and this is really huge for the Prowlers. Uh, Scandalberry, of course, has played half of the year up in the SPHL on loan, started off with the Fayetteville Marksman, uh, and then uh, played uh, the bulk of his season in Macon with the Mayhem, and uh, finished off uh, four games uh, in Huntsville with Havoc. But uh, now, the time that he spent with Port Huron, he was uh, he was making all sorts of great things happen. 22 games played, 13 goals, 26 points, 5 power play goals, 51 penalty minutes, a plus 3, and 105 shots on goal. So Port Huron's offense just got immensely better with Scandalbury back in the lineup to complement Dalton J and uh, Alex Johnson and Matt Graham and the like. So uh, yeah, that, that'll definitely help, especially with the two games against Danbury this weekend. All right. Uh, the last thing fed related, there's two more things on the docket here, in this video. All right. Uh, Facebook page for the, the Withville pro hockey team. They are having a Name the Team contest. Garbage. Uh, (laughs) They're having a Name the Team contest, and the winner that's selected on April 30th gets two season tickets to the hockey team at the Apex Center. So, obviously, uh, this behooves people that are a little bit more local to offer a winning name rather than somebody like me who's eight hours away. Uh, but anyway, uh, my understanding is the team is going to be the Virginia somethings. Um, I offered the suggestion, the Shenandoah Rough Riders, but apparently that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for something to incorporate Virginia. So, uh, anyway, uh, so that is that, uh, that again, the contest ends on the 30th of April. So just a few days away. And my understanding is that Baton Rouge is announcing their name the team contest uh, today. And, of course, there's going to be a big, huge move to rename the team the Kingfish. But uh, we'll see. Uh, last thing I want to mention, and this has absolutely nothing to do with the FPHL. 
the Fed. But it has everything to do with hockey, and it's just one of those priceless things that I'm so glad I got to see. Um, you want to talk about something that really hits you in the feels. Um, if you can access on Facebook uh, Sportsnet's page, um, there is a great video. Uh, last night, Ottawa Senators uh, traveled to Buffalo to take on the Sabres. Craig Anderson in goal for the Sabres. And in overtime, the Sabres ended up winning it, giving Anderson a win. The thought is that Anderson is probably retiring. Well, as soon as the goal went in, the entire Buffalo team, rather than celebrate the goal, they all poured off the bench and poured around uh, Craig Anderson, celebrating the great career that he has had. And, uh, and then, to make matters even better, Ottawa came off their bench, waited by the bench, and as soon as Craig was able to skate out, after the, the huge, massive group hug from his teammates, all the members of Ottawa lined up to congratulate Craig. And, you know, that's awesome. Craig Anderson, he's not a Hall of Fame goalie, but he's had a very, very good, long career, um, has really beaten the odds in a lot of different ways. If you're familiar with, your, with his story, um, you know. But anyway... It is great video. So, yeah, go to Facebook, check out uh, Sportsnet's page, and watch uh, the video of uh, Craig Anderson just being pleasantly mauled by everyone on the ice. Uh, that, that was awesome to see. So, anyway, that is it for today. Um, uh, we will uh, be back with you tomorrow with... Uh, Nice uh, little white outboard next to me, and all the you know the the cheesy uh, trappings that comes with uh, this video being done at home rather than in my truck. All right, thank you so much again for watching. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Remember, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we are on video here on YouTube, and then for the remainder of the season, that is. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have uh, an audio edition on Spotify. So make sure to download the Spotify app. It's a free app to use. Uh, doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and then search for Fed League Flash. That's me. Follow me there. And on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can keep up to date with what's going on in the FPHL. Everything you want to know about the Fed in 15 minutes or less. And it's less. So... Uh, thank you again so much for watching. We will talk to you soon. This is Gary Ryan for today's Friday's Fed League Flash.